Hey, it's Mr. Robin Yount, the Hall of Famer. And Robin, it is always great to see you, catch up with you, talk a little bit of baseball. But first, just want to ask, how are you and your family doing in Arizona? We are all doing fine. A little bit of an adjustment. Uh, not so much for me personally. Um, I have, I'm still able to do a lot of the things I would be doing anyhow. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I've told people before, oftentimes I wake up in the morning and I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but by the end of the day, I've run out of time. So I'm still <laughs> kind of in that mode. Um, uh, my, my motorcycle shops are closed, unfortunately, so I, I can't get parts and, and go look at bikes and do the things that I do once in a while, but I have gotten to get up in the mountains and do a little fishing once in a while on my own. I stay... <laughs> Uh, I try not to stay six feet from the fish. I'd like to get a little bit closer, but if there's humans up there, I, I try to keep my distance. Um, well, but the family has, we've had an adjustment here. My son, uh, who works for Quicken Loans, they shut their offices all down downtown, oh, at least a month ago. And his internet at his uh, at his condo doesn't work very well. So he's been working out of our house for the last three weeks. Um, he's taken over the dining room as his office. <laughs> um, and then my uh, one of the, my daughters is still able to work part time. And, and then my other daughter has a that she had to shut down as far as retail, but she has mm -hmm. online or and that kind of stuff she can still fill. So, uh, and then my oldest daughter that's in, in um, Charlotte, she is actually in daycare and they still are able to do some of that, but with a lot of restrictions. But, so everybody's managing, we're, we're, we're doing fine, looking for this to be over as soon as possible. We, and as everyone else is, we're looking forward to getting back to the, to the real world that we enjoy so much. Well, it is great to hear that you and your family are doing well. Glad to hear you're still able to get out on the motorcycle, get some fishing in, the things that you love in retirement now. And we're all waiting for baseball to come back. And we're going to relive the 1982 World Series. And Robin, we had the chance to catch up with Cecil Cooper and talk to him about the ALCS, that really dramatic series against the California Angels, winning game five to send you to the World Series for the first time. Um, can you describe just what was the momentum, the energy, just the feeling around the team and how you guys were feeling coming off of that thrilling ALCS win to set you up for the World Series? Well, to say the least, we were coming in on a real high because the, <laughs> the, the way that playoff uh, series played out, uh, it, it wasn't looking too good the way it started, but it certainly ended uh, ended well. And uh, so we had a lot of momentum on our side after after beating the Angels three in a row uh, to go into the World Series with with that behind us was uh, was a good was a good start. That's for sure. Do you remember just what the storylines were around the World Series? You know you. The Milwaukee Brewers were the newcomers, right? It was their first appearance in the World Series. And you're matching up with the St. Louis Cardinals in what's now known as the Sud Series. And they had a ton of experience on their side in the World Series. Uh, was that a factor for you guys at all? Or what was your mentality and looking at the matchup with the St. Louis Cardinals? I think the matchup, Sophia, couldn't have been better. Because, mm -hmm. yes, the Cardinals... Um, as an organization had a lot of World Series experience. But as far as the individual players on that team, I'm not, I'm, I don't remember uh, specifically, but there wasn't a whole lot of them, I don't think, that, that had a lot of World uh, Series experience, but maybe some. But if you remember, you don't, you're too young, but we made a, uh, uh, a very significant trade with the Cardinals a few years prior to this. You know, we got Ted Simmons and Pete Vukovic and Raleigh Fingers in a pretty major trade with the Cardinals, mm -hmm. who also on their side had four or five of 
the Brewer players, and specifically, I, I wish I could remember them better, but uh, who we actually traded there, I think there were, David Green was, I think, part of that deal. And uh, I know a pitcher were involved too. Anyhow, there were players on the Cardinals that were Brewers mm -hmm. three, roughly three years prior and vice versa. We had ex-Cardinal players. And then, you know, that's pretty intriguing in itself. And then throw in two of the, you know, the, the, the iconic beer towns in, 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 you know, in all the country, if not the world for that matter. Uh, close proximity to each other. So it really made for – the side notes were, were, were as intriguing as the series itself, I think. And you guys came in with this reputation. You had hit more than 200 home runs in the season. You're Harvey's wall bangers, right? This becomes an identity of this team. Meanwhile, the Cardinals, they're known for playing whitey ball under their manager, Whitey Herzog. On the field, did it feel like a good matchup to Robin in terms of the talent, the skill sets of these teams? Well, in that regard, we were all, like you just described, two totally different teams. Uh, we, we had a lot more power. Uh, mm -hmm. They had more speed, although we had some speed too. You can't say that a, a little bit of, uh, of what we did was we could run, a few of us could still run along with power. They, they were more, you know, they were a turf team. Back then, a lot of AstroTurf fields. That team was built for turf, uh, not so much for power. Um, so, the, and the pitching staffs were obviously both very solid. You don't get that far without, without good pitching. So, I, you know, on paper, the matchup couldn't have been better. And then obviously, you know, the, the series played out that way too. Well, it certainly did, and Harvey's Wallbangers got off to a rocking start in game one. You're on the road at Bush Stadium to mm -hmm. start the World Series, and all your offense does is put together 17 hits in route to a 10 to nothing victory, Robin. And Paul Molitor sets a World Series record with five hits in that game. You follow up with a four-hit game of your own, and you jump out to a 2 to nothing lead right away in the first inning. What did that do? in terms of maybe putting the Cardinals on their heels right away for your offense to come out slugging like that? Well, I didn't remember that we scored two runs in the first inning. I do remember that Molitor, uh, Paulie, and, and myself got a whole bunch of hits in that first game. <laughs> I wish we would have saved some of those hits, though, for game seven. But uh, it was nice to get off uh, to a good start. Um, I remember Caldwell, I think it was Caldwell pitched the shutout. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, when you get such a big lead like that and, uh, uh, and win a game of that magnitude so big, unfortunately, when you're on the other side, those are easy to forget. You know, when you lose the close ones uh, or, or win the close ones, I think they have a lot more impact than, than uh, a blowout game like that. So, uh, it, it was nice to come out with that momentum and win big, obviously, but uh, said sometimes that can work against you because you would like to save some of all that offense you had for maybe the next day or down the road. Well, you and Paul did combine for nine hits in that game, and you referenced Mike Caldwell. He was your game one starter, and all he did was throw a complete game three-hit shutout against a very good Cardinals lineup. What do you remember about how he threw the ball and to get that kind of dominating performance from your starter to start a World Series? Without going into detail, because I don't remember a lot of detail, but I would, I would wager a lot of money, though, that Mike Caldwell was, was the typical Mike Caldwell that game. He, he probably got a lot of ground balls, uh, didn't throw, you, you know, made things happen quickly, and... Um, you know, he enticed hitters into swinging at pitches just barely out of the strike zone. And if he shut that team out, which was a good hitting team, good contact team, they didn't have a lot of power, but they made contact. If he shut that team out with speed on the AstroTurf, I'm sure he was vintage Mike Caldwell, keeping the ball down and getting a lot of ground balls. 
So with that, the 10 nothing win, you take game one, you drop game two at Bush Stadium. So it's an even series. As you return to Milwaukee and you start game three at County Stadium, you know you've got three games there at home in front of your great home fans. Robin, can you describe what it was like to be in Milwaukee, the energy you got from the fans in that time that Milwaukee was hosting the World Series? Well, without a doubt, for me personally, it was the highlight of my career, was playing in that World Series. And when we got back to Milwaukee, I think it was the highlight of all of our Brewer fans too, because we had never been there before. And the fans were as excited as we are. And so, um, you know, it's what you dream about. Every kid that ever played the game of baseball probably had some sort of dreams about playing in a World Series. It's the pinnacle of our sport. And so to finally have that happen in reality, I was no different. I, I was excited. This is what we, we, we were, our goal was from the day we put a Brewer uniform on was to, to get to a World Series. And even though it was, what was it, 82, that was roughly eight years into my career, mm -hmm. it felt like it had been forever. I mean, it was like, oh man, are we ever going to get there? And for, after eight years, we got to a World Series. And it was just, you know, it was better than I even imagined once, you know, when, when you're there. The excitement, the excitement was, was almost indescribable. But if I could back up for a second. Sure. Just from a player's perspective, as far as feeling it, the excitement or the pressure, how do you want to describe it? The playoffs against the Angels felt like the tension and the pressure was way higher than the, than the, the feeling uh, or at least the pressure in the World Series. And I think that's because you're trying to get to the World Series so bad as a player that, that the pressure mounts and becomes so much greater to get there than it is once you're there, you've reached the, the World Series. There's, there's nothing beyond this. So we're here. And I think it was, it was in a more relaxed way of playing the game, at least for me personally, in the World Series than it was the playoffs itself. That's fascinating to hear you say that. But that makes sense that you would describe it that way, that – you know, the pressure to get there was more than maybe the moment itself. But, but Robin, for those of us who will never play in a World Series, um, what is the best part about putting on that Brewers uniform and you're playing in a World Series and you'll, you're fulfilling that dream? I don't, I don't know. The, be, the best part is just the, the, whole, the whole experience. And again, being that close to achieving the word I used earlier, pinnacle, the pinnacle of our sport, or that, you know, we are on the doorstep of, of what it is that every athlete is trying to accomplish when they set out to be a professional athlete, and that's to, to reach the pinnacle of their sport. And, and we were on that, uh, on that doorstep. And so, you know, to describe it to somebody, it, it, it I don't know how, to, how you do that other than, you know, just say it, it, it's all and more than what I ever imagined it was going to be. Well, you do drop game three at home. So now we get ready for game four. You're sending Moose Haas to the mound. And, and Robin, initially this game does not go in your favor. You're trailing five to one. And you only have three hits. So the, the bats have gone quiet a little bit. Uh, but things change there. The six-run rally, you take advantage there. Five hits, a Cardinals error, you put together a six-run rally. What do you remember about how that inning unfolded to take the lead? Oh, Sophia, I don't remember anything about it. I was <laughs> going to ask you, what inning was that? that was it was the seventh. <laughs> what was it? The seventh inning. Whoa. That, I'm going to have to watch the replay of that game. We came back from five to one in the seventh inning. Yes, six I runs. I love it. 
I love runs, it. You put together five hits. You take advantage of a Cardinals error. Um, let's see here. You and Gorman Thomas each had two run singles. Does, is that starting to come together a little bit? Uh, no, I wish it did. You know what? You should, you should have let me watch the replay of this game before we did this interview. But maybe we well, maybe, maybe we'll get you the video and we'll ask you to take a look back at it. Yeah, that I would love. But so, yeah, so you come back, you put together six runs in the seventh, and you come away with that win in game what four. What game. Now, now <laughs> I really want to watch it. I don't, really, I don't recall that at all. I, I, I apologize, but I don't. I'm getting a no. style in, in my old age, and I would think I would have remembered that game. Well, we can watch the video. We'll come back to that one. But uh, so you do win game four. And so the series is even now again, as we set up for game five and Mike Caldwell is back on the mound. Doesn't quite go the same way as a complete game shutout, but he picks up his second win of the world series there. And Robin, you do come away with that win to take a three to two lead. Do you have any memories of game five, especially that being the last game at County stadium? Well, I'm hoping that I remember, Remember, I do know that somewhere in this World Series at County Stadium, I hit a home run. And maybe that was in game five, I hope. That is, that's the game you're describing. It was. In the it right was. center. I think I hit it into the bullpen or in that area, maybe into the bleachers. But I know, again, fulfilling a, a, a childhood dream of hitting a home run in a World Series game, I fulfilled that dream. And so... I hope you're going to tell me that happened in game five. It did indeed. And not only that, you had your home run, like you just referenced. You had a four-hit game, Robin. In that same game? In that same game. Okay. I just, something just came to mind. But this isn't a positive note. This must have been game three that we lost. Can I go back to game you, three? Absolutely, we can go back to game three. Okay. Because now I'm getting angry because uh -oh. in game three, we had the bases loaded fairly late in the game. Maybe, I don't know. It was late in the game. I don't remember the final score. But I hit a, a fly ball to left center that Willie, uh, Willie McGee went across and it would have – he took a home run away from me with the bases loaded and it had to be game three because I know we didn't win this game. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't make that play, we probably would have won that game because it was late and it mm -hmm. would have put us ahead and it would, he, it just barely would have cleared defense. But if we watch a replay, that ball would have gone out. And that I remember, unfortunately, I remember, <laughs> I remember the negative, but I remember the home run that I did. Yet, so, so, yeah, that, there was one point there where uh, Willie made a heck of a play on the ball. But uh, so uh, that was one thing that did come to my mind. I know we got a bunch of hits in game one, and, he, and Willie McGee took a home run away, a grand slam, actually, uh, mm -hmm. away from us in uh, – it must have been game three because we didn't win if you're saying we won four and five. So that's, that's one thing I remember. <laughs> So was it redeeming them, knowing that you had been robbed of that grand slam to deliver that moment and Homer, and like you said, just fulfill that dream of every player's dream to hit a home run in a World Series, let alone at home? Yeah, I don't remember the meaning so much of the one I hit in game five that did go out, whether it was important or not. But I know <laughs> the one that they caught that would have gone out if Willie really doesn't make the play would have been a big one. Well, Robin, to this day, you are the only player to have two separate four-hit games in a World Series. Were you aware of that? Uh, I've heard it. I didn't know that that still – they said that when it happened. I remember mm -hmm. hearing that after the World Series. They, they mentioned it. I didn't know that it still stood, if it does. Um, but I go back. I wish I would have saved some of those for game seven. <laughs> As you can tell, I, 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 I've never gotten over the, hey, is there any way that we can change, during this interview, change the outcome of game seven in 1982 by chance? 
Yes, you have you have ultimate authority in this interview. Okay, so if you want to change the outcome the world that we live in today, maybe there's somehow some way if I learn to use this computer properly, I might be able to go back in there and rewrite game seven. If I'm going to work on that. <laughs> well, Robin, you and every Brewers fan would love for you to have the power to do that, right? Because <laughs> yep. I mean, you win games four, you win games five at home. You now have a three to two lead in the world series. You go back to St. Louis. We know how the series ends ultimately in games six and seven. Um, but when you return to Milwaukee, the reception that the team received after the World Series, what do you still remember about that? Well, it was the greatest reception I can ever remember for a team that lost. <laughs> I don't know that anybody, I don't know that any other city or, or fan base ever had a, quite the reception we did after coming back. You, would, you couldn't tell from from basically the, the ticker tape parade that we had the next day that we didn't win. You know, the, the fans showed their support like, uh, like we had won. You know, I, I know every guy to a man was crushed that we didn't uh, when we went through that parade. And I know no one really looked forward or wanted to even do it the morning of. But as it played out, it became a moment that was very special to all of us in our hearts. I know that. And uh, like mm -hmm. I say, you had a very a, a group of, of very depressed uh, uh, baseball players uh, that morning that because of the reaction of the fans uh, later on that day, turned, made it, made it a lot easier to swallow let's put it that way robin this may be an odd question but when you have the opportunity to play in a world series which any player that is their goal and their dream playing baseball and you make it a seven game series and you feel like you've put your best effort out there as an individual and as a team are there any regrets i mean obviously every player wants to win but now that you've had years to process it and think about it do you, do you live with the outcome and just have no regrets about how it played out or how do you even handle that today? Well, I don't, I don't have that. It's still, the, it's still the most disappointing my baseball career. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, it was our one shot at a World Series. I wouldn't change it for the world. I would, I would rather have had that outcome then even though that game seven hurt more than any game I ever played in, I would still have rather had that play out than never have the opportunity at all. So, um, you know, uh, we, we got the feeling, you know what was interesting about that year? We won, we had five do or die games, win or go home five at the end of the season in 1982. The last game of the season against Baltimore, we had to win or we went home, we won. That was, a, that was the highest we've ever been for a single game win. Six or seven days later, we had, to, we had three games against the Angels. We had to win or we went home, three in a row. The win, winning all three of those, was like winning the biggest games of our lives. We had, one, we had a fifth in the seventh game of the World Series. Mm -hmm. We fell short in that game. We won four out of five win or go home games. It's that's amazing. Pretty that's pretty impressive in itself. It's amazing. But I still would love to have had that <laughs> game. I'm still gonna, right. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, continue to be great and still not be satisfied without game seven. But I was able to experience four out of five must win games mm -hmm. and win those as a group. I didn't win them, but the Brewers win as, as a, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as being part of that team. So let me, that's why I say this was still the most exciting time in my entire 20-year career was those 
I'll call it two or three weeks of mm -hmm. baseball from the end of the season through the World Series. You know, every game you're playing is the biggest game of your life. So it was, it was, I wouldn't change it for the world. It gives uh, me chills uh, just hearing you talk about it. Uh, um, I, it gives me chills just hearing uh, you talk about it and relive it was, it those was, weeks. Uh, I just wish we could have brought, the, you know, that world championship to the Brewers. And now I just hope before I die that, the, that these guys somewhere before this is all over and we get a world championship in Milwaukee. Every Brewers fan, I think, echoes that sentiment, Robin. And um, is it amazing to you how much Brewers fans in the city of Milwaukee and fans across the state still love that 1982 team when you guys have the opportunity to get together like you did a couple years ago at Miller Park. And now Brewers fans, as we're waiting for baseball, they're getting their baseball memories, their best baseball memories by watching back these World Series games. Well, hopefully it gives the younger generation a chance to see, you know, what we were able to do back in the back in 1982 and maybe without this, you know, this might not have been, been played as much. And so it's an opportunity for Brewer fans to relive some history. And uh, maybe the younger generation will, will learn, learn who we were in 1982. Well, Robin, thank you so much for joining us. Great to hear that you and your family are doing well in Arizona, and we're all looking forward to watching this 1982 World Series again. So thank you so much for sharing your memories and uh, your iconic career with all of the Brewers fans. Well, you're very welcome, Sophia. Thank you, and you, you make sure you stay safe too and healthy, and everybody back in Milwaukee, and uh, obviously our Brewer family. Uh, I wish everybody the very best, and. Uh, We'll get through this. We'll get through it, and we'll all come back stronger than ever. All right, and keep keep Mr. Bob Euchre in line down there in Arizona, too. Now that, as you know, that's not an easy thing to do, but I try my best. All right. Well, thanks so much, Robin. We appreciate it. Bye-bye, Sophia.